Hello, welcome to another exciting episode of the Toy Box. This entire video is dedicated to kind of my history with Estes rockets, starting at the very end of the 60s, 1969, with my father, and coming to the present day in 2024. This video will give you a fair warning. There will be no shots of rockets launching or anything like that. This is purely on the modeling side of it, the collecting side of it. I'm going to have some tips and some activities. I'm going to show you my old collection, my newer collection, my latest collection, and the restoration jobs I'm working on. What you're seeing right here is the original Big Bertha that my dad got along with the Alpha Starter Kit in 1970. He saw a ad in Boys Life magazine when I was a Cub Scout and it was for uh, flying rockets from Estes, a little tiny ad and he got interested and ordered a catalog and he showed me the catalog I just fell in love with it so he bought the starter launch kit that had the launch pad, the electrical launch gear it also had an alpha rocket it had the paint and the supplies to build the rocket and he also purchased this Big Bertha my dad built the original Alpha, which I have somewhere. It's packed away. I have to find it. And this big Bertha, which he built himself in the basement of our new house in Denver. And I just couldn't believe how, how neat it was. And his skill in constructing this is just fantastic. He hand-painted the whole thing. One side of the fins are blue. The other side are red. His delineation of those two sides is perfect. He put a little Air Force decal on it. We've flown this rocket probably, I don't know, 100 times. I mean, just every time we launched it, we would we launch this rocket. We never lost it. We never came close to losing it. It's just a beautiful rocket. I fired it one more time with both my sons about 11 or so years ago, and it still flew great. And it's officially retired. I don't want to risk damaging it ever. It's a classic, and it's in my showcase. One of my favorite models as a kid was the Gyrock, which was a small little rocket that when it launched, the fins were straight, and when it ejected its engine in apogee, the little fins would snap into a position and it would come down in a spin like a helicopter. And so its recovery system was a helicopter recovery system. I finished it about 20 years ago. And then a few years after that, I said, you know what, let's upsize this. And I love upsizing rockets. This one right here is upsized almost to scale. Not exactly right. But I took all the design elements of the Gyrock, upsized it, and totally improved. You know, went away from the tape strip hinges for the flip parts of the wing and went with RC hinge material. I made it so that you could easily replace the elastic thread because as we all know, elastic thread wears out like rubber bands, it rots and it wears out. But I made it so this is easy to replace. So I don't have the elastic thread on it right now. And then I made a, a very customized mechanism to hold the hinged part of the fins in place in a straight line so that the gyro can go straight up. Then when the engine ejects out the back, these parts of the fins snap up like this and it rotates back to earth and I've had several flights of this with absolutely no damage and it's considerably larger than the original gyrock and I absolutely love it the engine ejection causing the flipping of the wing sections was a friction fit on the original gyrock and it just wore it down and it didn't work very well I constructed a new methodology where those problems are put to bed and it works flawlessly very cool to fly this this is an example of one of the upsize rockets that I have created. This video is going to cover a lot of different things about model rocketry in my life, including finishing some kits that I stopped working on when I was a kid, maybe some lost parts or something broke, what have you, resurrecting or refurbishing or restoring some of the rockets to flyable condition even though I might not fly them again rockets from my past 
and uh, as well as building from scratch rockets that I had lost. This particular one that you're looking at right here is my Aero B300 and this has an interesting story. I built this rocket when I was about 10 years old and uh, this lower stage as you can see it's not bad for a little kid but there's you know there's there's glue and there's imperfections in it and you know the fin alignment's pretty darn good on it and I launched this twice both times losing this upper part from the uh, balsa adapter the BT5 body tube and the nose cone this whole section losing it usually the shock cord broke I think on some of these thinner body tubes on, on very lightweight rockets the ejection charge was pretty strong and it would really blow off the the top part and, and break it off I was never really a big fan of the elastic shock cords and now we're using things like Kevlar or doubling them up uh, but back then you use what came in the bag and you flew your rocket so the first time I flew this the whole top section uh, I didn't feel like I had the skill to make a demarcation here between the black and the white so I painted it all silver up here and I flew this rocket and this bottom part just came down with nothing else on it and this part with its parachute just floated away several years later I reconstructed it just like you see here with the black and white I took the careful measurements to make sure that the color change was right where it should be in the model flew it and again even with a doubled up shop cord I didn't even find this part again it just blew off and this came tumbly down once again I think it it broke one of the fins a little bit and I, I glued it back together so this time I reconstructed it one more time uh, the uh, balsa adapter the nose cone from uh, balsa machine service they do a great job and then and this body tube was just a BT5 I got in a body tube kit from Estes and cut it to size and I'm using this just for display kind of showing you know over 40 years of skill change between the bottom part and the top part and I don't care it's just it's just I, I could have sanded this down and re refinished and I just didn't want to do it I wanted to leave the the original look and feel of how I did it when I was a little kid and that's the first project that I completed recently another rocket that I had challenges with when I was a little kid about 10 years old or so was the Estes X-ray which I loved I loved the payload section right here I just loved the whole look at the rocket it was the Astron X-ray and this was another one that I shot it off and the first time I lost the nose cone replaced it the second time I lost the whole body tube and was left with only these two pieces this is my original x-ray or what's left of it the parachute and the bottom part of the payload section with the balsa adapter that's it the color scheme was gold on the adapter gold on the nose cone the body tube was red the fins were blue very garish but I liked a lot of color in my rockets when I was a kid so this is all that I have from the original x-ray and I wanted to rebuild it I wanted to rebuild the x-ray from my youth so I got a bunch of parts body tube from Estes and nose cone and adapter from balsa machine service a clear payload section from Estes from a bag of sections you know you have to buy a bunch of them at once and then of course way too long BT20 body tube and that's because they all come in a bag and they're all like 18 inch, inches or so so I have to cut this down and then I'm going to put fins on it I downloaded copies of the original fin pattern body tube marking guide shot cord mount all this and I printed this on paper and I'm also going to print it on cardstock so that the fin alignment tool will be sturdier what have you I do have this that I was showing you earlier this is my original instruction sheet I kept a lot of the original instruction sheets and a lot of the packages from the old rockets I built and I'm really glad I did that because it's a nice piece of history to keep that stuff I don't know where the bag is for the x-ray it's probably buried somewhere I've got several boxes of old stuff but this is what gave me the parts list 
and you can decode from this what size the body tubes were and everything and uh, you know how how long to cut them. I really like how this one came out. You can see the color difference between the old 1971 brush painted testers gold finish on my original adapter and the original payload section and then how the new gold looks which almost has a little more bronze to it but is a really pretty color so here they are the remnants of the old and the new one join us soon for the next episode